Hi, I'm your host, Praveen Ravi Sankar, and this is the Data Standard Audio Experience. We have a very exciting guest today. On our podcast, we have Stas Zhukovsky, Director of Solutions Engineering at Brands. Today, we are speaking about his work in solutions engineering and the ins and outs of the industry. Welcome to the show. Hey, Praveen. Thanks for having me. Thanks so much for coming on the show today. Go ahead and introduce yourself. So my name is Stas Zhukovsky. Um, I'm based on the surname and I'm based out of Moscow, Russia. I'm a lead the technical customer facing team at Branch, which includes sales engineering, professional services and solution engineering. And I want to talk a bit today about solution engineering because I do think that there's some overlap with data science and technical roles in general. Yeah, that sounds really good. And as someone who works in data science and is like interested in it, I don't really know what exactly solutions engineering is. So I'd love to hear your definition of solutions engineering so our listeners can have an idea of what you're talking about. And more importantly, what makes it so fascinating to you? So in this space in general, titles don't mean too much because you can have a title and do a whole different thing um, Mm -hmm. compared to come from company to company. At Branch specifically, uh, solution engineering is a role that you get to work with pretty large enterprise and strategic customers uh, that use the platform. And the idea is to help them grow on the platform, help them unlock more use cases and push out implementations and uh, all these kind of different use cases. It's exciting because it gives you an opportunity to work with a lot of household names because Branch is a platform that you probably click on Branch links every day without knowing it because we're part of the product um, that you know uh, is out there. So it gives you an opportunity to look inside how companies operate. You interact with data science teams, data engineering, you interact with marketing, paid advertising, social teams, and you can see you're going to be the trusted advisor for them. And you can see how that company works from within without actually having to join it. Yeah, that sounds really cool. And kind of on that topic, when working with these uh, customers, what do you usually look for when working with them? And what type of clients do you usually work with? And like, if not going too much in depth, you know, obviously, but uh, I'd love to hear like some of your favorite projects that you've worked on. So this is interesting because Branch covers a ton of verticals, uh, pretty much any vertical uh, except gaming. And these would be like in the household names in the top 200 most popular apps in the app store. Most of them will be using Branch. Oh, wow. And you are going to be assigned to a specific book of business and specific accounts. And the contract lengths are usually two, three years. So you actually get to experience a lot of the growth the company is going through, and you're going to be a big part of that team. You're, you're, you're going to be a trusted advisor and you, people will rely on your skills and your ex- expertise in the market to make decisions and guide them where the next, where they need to go. Yeah, that sounds good. And what was your like favorite client or like favorite type of project that you worked on recently? So interestingly enough, um, I was a developer myself back in the day. And I joined Branch as an accident. So I was using Branch in one of when I was building an app and I needed to use it for the deep linking use case there. And I've also been organizing Coca Heads Meetup, which is an iOS developer community meetup here in okay. Moscow. Well, it's all around the world, but I was doing the Moscow one. And there was, uh, I was pitching about a topic of deep linking, doing a presentation on it. And I was talking about Branch. And one of the dudes in the audience happened to know the co-founder, one of the co-founders of Branch Mata from San Francisco. And he connected us on Facebook. And almost after one conversation, Mata asked if I wanted to be the Branch ambassador for Russia uh, mm-hmm. or the evangelist, how we called, called it then. And I had to Google what that is because I had no idea what an evangelist does or a brand ambassador. It was a part-time gig and I went to conferences, just, you know, talk to other developers, help them implement. And then over time, this became a full story for me. And I actually positioned how there was life before and after branch for me, um, just the amount of opportunity that I got. And at some point I was managing uh, the APAC team also and flying all over like Singapore, Korea, all around Europe. And I was actually on the road probably two, three weeks out of every month and kids started to forget my name at some point. Um, so the pandemic was, was a real refresher for me, um, where I probably spent more time with family than ever before and quite excited to go back to the pace of traveling again very soon. Yeah. So on the note of that, so when you are traveling and when you are, when you are working with these companies, what, what's the biggest challenge that you faced 
when trying to integrate these solutions with companies that may not have like the infrastructure that you're looking for or um, when you're setting up a data pipeline for them like what's something that like is the biggest challenge for your team to like come out uh, to get over when you're helping them i think the most exciting thing for me still stands today where you uh, start conversations with a really big brand and at some point of that conversations, you sit down the mobile team and, for example, the data team or the mobile team and the web team, and they actually meet in that meeting because they've never talked before. <laughs> and the project, um, that's, that's the whole idea of branches, like pushing your organization, especially your marketing organization to the next step and improving those connections within the company. So when the most, the biggest competitor of branches, internal inertia in that company, where they might not be ready to make that move. But when they are ready, magic just happens because you get to interact on projects cross department, cross function, and you see really great results in terms of growth. That's really cool. And what are some like trends that you've noticed within these companies recently? There's two types of companies generally, ones that are pretty massive and they use old time, old fashioned tech, and there's the new model modern mobile first mobile only companies that try to adapt to you know, more mobile vendors the trends are it's interesting because whenever you, since we're on the data science podcast um, the biggest challenge is for any SaaS product is creating like a beautiful dashboard for marketers to use but at the end of the day the data science team never touches the dashboard all they want to get out of the platform is data. And like for them, it's how you do configure that pipe. Ideally, it should go to the S3 instance or whatever cloud they have. And they want it in the least amount of effort to set it up. So they don't want any intermediate layers to set it up any, you know, to do any kind of mapping. They just wanted to get the data as fast as possible to their data center so they can make decisions based on top of it. And the cool thing is that in, as a solution engineer, you see all of these different tools work together for different customers. So you might have an instance of an S3 bucket and a Tableau on top of it. Another company would have a Google Cloud infrastructure with Looker on top of it. And others might have their own you know, warehouse with their own visualization system. And the role is to help data engineers figure out how the data looks like and how can they can import it. Yeah. And as someone who, you know, has worked in programming and is now on like the other side of the table, what advice do you have for data scientists and people that work in data engineering to make their work, you know, more feasible and more usable to work with other parts of the company? So as we were chatting with Praveen uh, previously, uh, before the podcast, the, the whole idea why I wanted to jump on this opportunity and do the podcast is because I was in that position where I was a developer myself. And at some point I got bored of coding and sitting 12 to 16 hours in front of a computer. And I wanted to have more human interactions and I wanted to have more people to talk to. And I didn't know that the options like solution engineering, sales engineering existed in the industry. And they're in incredibly high demand at the moment. So this is an opportunity for people to, that have technical backgrounds and they want to continue developing themselves in a more communication type of role, customer facing role. You can actually leverage your tech skills and they will be heavily you can continue growing and the tech skills while at the same time interacting with customers, uh, chatting with CTO, CMO of mega corporations. And yeah. you're going to be feeling confident probably like after a year uh, in, in the role. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And other than the interaction with other people, what's been your like second favorite part of being a solutions engineer? I think the cross collaboration. So you get to work with product managers, specifically at Branch, it's a very distributed team and a very diverse team. So I typically start my day with chatting with solution engineers in South Korea or China, and then I spend the whole day in EMEA and my manager is actually in the US. So I call it branch TV, it never stops itself. You have to like turn that off because the buzz will never, never stop. And the cool thing is that you're gonna be working with product managers, you're gonna be working with customer success managers, uh, with engineering. It's just an insane amount of collaboration across team work to get your dump done. And you're the, like, the tip of the spear that is actually communicating with the customer. Wow. Yeah. And kind of on that topic, when you are, you know, interacting with different, different parts of the company, what's the main thing you've noticed that people need to like prepare for when they do meet with you? And 
What's some advice that you give to companies that are trying to work towards a place where they can work with companies such as Branch? During these times when companies start to look for other remote employees, and I think we're never going to go back to the normal, you know, five day in the office type of yeah. work. There's a quote that I really like, which is not all talent lives in one place. Great talent lives in one place. And when you're looking for diversity in your team and you start hiring across regions, across globally, the best book that I know that I've definitely changed my approach to different cultures is the Culture Map book. I highly recommend people read it because it removes a lot of the frustrations when you have people from, for example, France and South Korea in, in the same meeting. You need to know that they expect different things from that meeting, whereas French people typically want to argue within the meeting, whereas South Koreans would you know, push back and not talk anything, and they would want to have a conversation after the meeting. So given that it, it gives you an opportunity, I'm almost like promoting the book um, and, and, and getting bonus points for it, but I'm not. Um, it gives you an opportunity to figure out how do you, you should approach working with distributed teams and giving in, taking into account the background where the person is coming from. Okay, that sounds really good. I mean, I'm going to definitely check that book out. I kind of wanted to end off our podcast on a kind of lighter note. And I wanted to, I know you touched on this earlier, but I want to ask you how your transition from working in person to remote has been. What's been your favorite thing? And how do you see it like changing moving forward? And I guess, are you excited to go back to work? Yeah, as I mentioned, I've been in situations where I was flying to another country for a one hour meeting with some customer. And that was the insanity of the world of, that we lived in, especially in sales. Mm -hmm. And I don't think we're ever going to go back to that world as an industry in general. I think the, the, the new policy would be that if you want to go to the office, it's for collaboration. So if you want to, if you have work to do full day and you're going to be sitting in front of your laptop, it's better to just work from home that day. Yeah. So if you're going to the office, it has to be collaboration with other people. And we're not going to have those insane travels anymore. There will be traveling, obviously, but people are now super mindful about where they go, when they go and for how long they go. That makes a lot of sense. Um, I wouldn't want to travel to somewhere just so I can work on my computer either. <laughs> and we at the Data Standard here are building a community of data enthusiasts and data thought leaders. Everyone is open for collaboration and wants to connect with each other. So I just wanted to ask what our community can do for you and what you want to get out of it. So I'll be fully transparent. I have a bunch of open roles in my team and I'm happy to have a first conversation with anyone who reaches out who's not sure if they want to move to this or not sure if they want to like fully get into like a, a, a interview cycle. I'm happy and open to have a friendly chat about how the world looks like on this end and what the opportunities might be for a specific individual. Wow, that's an amazing opportunity. Like, thank you so much. Yeah, and so please hit me up on LinkedIn. Happy to uh, schedule 30 minutes in the upcoming weeks and chat about it. Yeah. And uh, we really, really appreciate your time for you coming on. And I really enjoyed our conversation. And I know you uh, mentioned that people can reach out to you on LinkedIn, but is there anywhere else that people can find you online? Anything that you want our community to check out online? Uh, it, it's easy to find me because uh, I have a pretty memorable address. It's just Stas at Branch.io. I think that's the best way. LinkedIn and, and, and Stas at Branch.io is the best way to reach me. From there on, we can schedule a Zoom call or something. Okay, WhatsApp perfect. call. Yeah. Well, thank you. And for more information on the data standard, you can find us at www.datastandard.io. Once again, thank you so much for coming on and thank you thank so much for listening. Thank you so much for having me, Praveen. It was a pleasure. Thank you.